are not going to be spotted out by any wards because there are no wards to be placed there. Oh, Zoe's about but to Zoe find themselves in the wrong part of town. Full on invade, uh, touring the uh, Julia Duck side of the map, looking for uh, some prime real estate. The monster Q coming from XDME is the only thing that's going to get thrown there alongside a sparkle thing. Yeah, it looked like a paddle star. Yeah, I forgot what the name of that ability was for a second, excuse me. But it seems as though things are uh, really, really calm to start, to start, despite just getting the word on the blue buff. And being able to see what, what uh, Graves' pathing is. What random, uh, random mid's pathing is, so. I'm not even sure uh, Julia Duck spotted out the whole invade. Shen could have gotten a much more invasive ward in instead of settling on the river brush if that whole team knew that the invade was on. Shen should have got it in on the blue buff and it would have paid almost immediate dividends as I think uh, Volibear will end up... No, wouldn't have made it to the blue buff by the time that ward expired. Uh, looks like Astral getting chunked down pretty low here. I would like to know what is going on in this top lane, because Jeremy Flip is uh, out of mana already. And Astral is uh, taking quite a chunk of damage there at the level 2 power spike. Catenator stepping a little bit too close to the sun, getting smacked by the tower. Big slap on the wrist. Astral Dose almost being forced to blow summoner spells there, not having heal available and only using cleanse and, and flash. Stepping on a trap underneath the tower is not the way you want things to happen. Up here in the top side of the map, it seems as though Exasperated found random mid, it was able to actually might uh, not smite that away because it seems global. It doesn't even seem to matter because uh, one more second and uh, oh, opting not to go for that dive there. But Jeremy Flip does not win that fight. I don't know. There you go. Black oh, Oreo cookies. Safety in numbers. Uh, looks like the rest of the team is up here gonna have a dive. That was uh. Real, real sloppy on the side of uh, NG Blossom. I don't, I don't know if the communicate the comms were there in the places that they should have been, but uh, that is a very strong start for Julia Duck. And well, trading first blood on the top side for what looked like a turret plate in the bottom side it looked like Catnator and XD Me taking a plate on the turret as only Astral there to defend for the time being. Astral Das on. Zaya recalling back. Random mid hovering this mid lane right now, not stepping into the bush for some reason, but uh Will back here and be able to pick up a uh quite a bit. Should be able to finish the jungle item there. Or the base jungle item, coming out with two long swords rather than long swords and a pair of boots. But it seems as though Jeremy Flip is back into the top lane. No teleport used, but it was able to come back with a dagger and a pair of boots. Yeah, it looks like uh, one of the early components for the Trinity Force coming in for Gangplank. But, uh, Shen already on the Bami Cinder. So we see a little bit of a item advantage. Although... The side of uh, Catenator and XD Me, the bot lane for NG Blossom, is actually where the gold is at. Catenator already able to purchase a BF sword when they go back, crossing that 300 or 1300 gold threshold. So this is going to be something that needs to be uh, given some attention. Catenator will have a early item advantage, it looks like, about to back.
bot side, the dragon does go over to almost uncontested. Uncontested while taking it, but afterwards, it seems as though NG Blossom really wants to fight back and picks off Astral Dose there. Dark Binding landing onto Pepsi's Zoe, but not being able to capitalize on it. Uh, that was a bit unfortunate uh, on the attempted escape by the uh, Julia Duck bot lane. Just uh, maybe a similar issue with uh, what happened for Julia Duck's first blood in the top lane. Just uh, unfortunate pathing. It seems as though even more is trying to happen up here in the top in the top side of the lane. Jeremy Flip easily able to uh, survive whatever gank that was coming from random mid. But think... exasperated is here on the top side now. As soon as he finishes Gromp, will probably be present here in this top lane. Well, they were trying to force Jeremy Flip out of the lane. Uh, Rift Herald should be up in about a minute, so maybe a little early with that uh, reveal. But I think the ping's coming down, showing uh, what random mid has in mind. He wants uh, a random Rift Herald. So it looks like uh, a little bit of a roam going on from Zoe, so might see a Sleepy Trouble Bubble landing. Maybe not, but Jeremy Flip doesn't look like they'll be able to get out of that one. Flashing away from Zoe is not what you want to do, because all that's going to do is give her the extra flash there. But, um, Jeremy Flip it does go down there to Pepsi Zoe, so it is one, a 1 for 0 trade. And we'll give uh, Tenzin some extra room to, uh, to farm back up, because he was down like 20 CS. Yeah, ranged versus melee, well, that's just going to happen, unfortunately. I consider Gangplank ranged because barrels and everything else, I believe he started with uh, Parlay to give himself that ranged advantage, and it looks like abandoning ship in the bot lane, Catenator and XD me going in. They tried to blow up to blow up Astro Dose and they do blow him up with four members of NG Blossom here. Much better communication it looks like this time around. Slippy Bubble Trouble landing onto Exasperated, but they're opting not to fight back despite the 4v4 not having any abilities up and it doesn't look good for NG Blossom right here. Oh, oh two flashes available for Bep Pepsi to use here. Well, only one. Pepsi did have to burn their actual flash to take down Jeremy Flip in the top lane. So no conventional flash for Pepsi, only uh, the flash available from uh, the fair and balanced Zoe ability. <laughs> but uh, we do see that Black Oreo Cookies is keeping quite a chokehold here on this, mid on this mid lane, making sure that each wave is pushed in relatively nicely when given the chance, but the main issue that's coming in right now is the fact that both of those kills went on to Exasperated's Volley Bear when uh, the real strong side of the map, the strong champion on their side on their side is Catenator actually. So um, we'll see if, if giving him the two kills was the move here in a few minutes, but it, I don't know if that it really matters seeing as how uh, Catenator has almost 40 CS over Astral Dose. Well, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. You do want to spread the love around. Uh -huh. You know, if Catenator becomes this uh, super powerful ADC, the problem is one Sleepy Trouble Bubble can nullify what would essentially be the entirety of the offensive output from the side of NG Blossom if Catenator gets CC. But the question is, is, is that really your your concern when you have a Morgana, not only a Morgana, but you also have a, 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 a Karma as well, and then you've got Exasperated there in front of you? Are you really uh, that afraid of the, of the Zoe's uh, abilities? Of Zoe's Sleepy Trouble? 
I think so, yes, because you can only black shield one thing out of who knows what. You have to get through... If truly Tenson can access the back line, uh, Catnator gets taunted. Uh, if Pepsi lands a sleepy trouble bubble, it, it's one of many options that can end up messing with Catnator. And I can see three of them. Astral could polymorph with the Lulu. So these are all problems that NG Blossom has to address if they go with the put all your eggs in one basket strategy. So. And Although I do agree with you, I don't think it's also fair to give the t to underestimate the top team as you do to misposition in such a way that uh, Tenzin would have access to the backline, or that even Astral would have access to the backline as Lulu. Because if you look at uh, the team comp of uh, of Julia Duck here, they don't really have a way into the backline. That is true. Uh, Graves would kind of have to make a. Uh a hero play to give uh, truly Tenzin a way to leave Stand United into the middle of a fight, which looked like what was and a huge dive came down while while you were while you were talking over that. Uh, Asher Doe stepped on a, stepped on a a Caitlyn trap and one of the ones that were hidden behind the tower as they were trying to escape, take a lot of damage, and then it just ma made it super easy for Exasperated to just ult out behind the tower and just dive them. And this is like a te an attestment to what I said earlier in the, in the split about how Volibear, like when they gave out the Volibear nerfs, that as a jungler, he's still going to be extremely relevant for that team fight aspect of him, as well as being able to just dive, dive towers so easily. Well, NG Blossom, a little... Lackluster in their beginning, uh, giving up the first blood, but it's been all NG Blossom since that point. Uh, the bottom lane turret already fallen, two plates on the top lane being claimed, as well as one in the mid lane. So that on its own is about 2,000 gold going over to NG Blossom, and we're looking at a 5,000 gold difference. And we're 13 minutes in, so this is a mountain that Julia Duck's side is going to have to climb. And they're going to have to do it by making a play. And it looks like Shelly going to be visiting the top lane, but not able to get into charge range as of yet. My Black Oreo Cookies tried to hold off a little bit just by giving the teleport to force... Shelly did not crash a little, a little, uh, as early as she would have normally. But the Bind does land on the Astral here, and three members are here, getting instantly taunted by the hiding, uh, Tenzin. But now the last two members of NG Blossom are here, a little bit of a, it looks like even more miscommunication, but the Volibear, exasperated, trying to recover what's left. Caitlyn ulti comes out, but is com it, it blocked. So it's not gonna find any kills, which ends up in a t one for, uh, one for O, and possibly picking up the tower if they uh, continue to pressure this properly. Ultimate coming in, Stormbringer, not gonna find any success with it. Well, it looks like Astral Dose is having a bit of a time in the bottom lane trying to fend off Jeremy Flip from claiming that inner turret. Uh, there was a solo kill down there to start things off. As Jeremy Flip did score a kill on Astral Dose, which was then n negated by the Graves kill onto Black Oreo Cookies. So, a cross map one for one, I would say. So, slight advantage to the side of Julia Duck as they were able to trade evenly across the map, at least over the short term, but it looks like Catnator going to be able to claim some more plates and Oh my god. Another down here, catching out turret. random random mid here in the bottom in the in the bottom side of the jungle. Placed very good barrels to really to really pick up the kill on him in the in the in the middle of the river. And it was a a, a pretty skillful one if you ask me with the uh, the invisible barrel. 
Yeah, that was nicely done. Jeremy Flip definitely doing some work uh, early on in this game. I believe he's got the Triforce done. Yes, because it, it is, although you do see that the kills are very, very close together, the tower difference and the CS difference between each member of the of the two of a lot of the members of ng blossom is really coming into play here that's why you can see that the gold difference is still six thousand between the teams despite that as ng blossom starts up the third dragon of the game which is the first ocean dragon yes yeah, so we're gonna have another ocean soul and it's if we get that far into the game but it looks like oh black oreo cookie's going to dive in the mid lane doesn't look like anything coming of it though NG Blossom running into the jungle unknowingly and forces uh, Random Mid to, to give up his blue buff as well as his Gromp, it looks like. Might try to contest it here, but I don't know if that's the play. Nope, does not contest it and allows NG Blossom just to run the jungle. Oh, Black Oreo Cookie's eating a huge paddle star. But it seems as though it doesn't even matter because the Stormbreaker coming out as well as the... Uh, the follow-up from uh, NG Blossom is really going to get it. The uh, Dark Binding into the uh, the Mantra, the mantra to, uh, uh, Focus Resolve, we're forgetting all of the names of the abilities now, uh, snags them two more kills, or uh, snags them another kill onto uh, Astral Dose. Well, it actually did get two kills because Pepsi and Astral Dose both being killed in response uh, to Black Oreo Cookies falling as well as claiming uh, a couple bonus gifts uh, for their troubles. It looks like the Rift Herald going over to Jeremy Flip, claiming the eye, as well as the final outer turret falling to Cacnator, I believe. So three mm -hmm. turrets now falling to Cacnator, who's just claiming all of the gold. And another fight breaking out here in the mid lane, exasperated, starting it out by getting caught out. A huge paddle star la landing on to Black Oreo Cookies yet again and take him down. But I think it was just a little bit biting off too much of what they can chew. But on, on the flip side, on the top, J J uh, Jeremy Flip up there with the Rift Herald really pushing in this tower. I don't think he'll be able to get the tower. Maybe he will get the tower. He definitely gets the tower there, but does he escape with his life is the question. Uh, that that will definitely be the question. Uh, oh. Shelly's uh, cousin Kelly uh, falling. So let's see if Jeremy Flip can... Uh... Oh, ultimate uh, not going to be able to enable Jeremy Flip to get out of there. So an exposed inhibitor in the top lane, 18 and a half minutes in. Uh, the kills are even at seven apiece, but that's about the only thing that's even in this game. A point you brought up a couple minutes before. Look at the CS differences across the board, uh, uh, focusing mostly on the top lane and the bottom lane. Uh, no, I guess even for the most part, relatively speaking, in the mid lane between Black Oreo Cookies and Pepsi. See, now this is just cla a classic game of like farm, of like farm difference. Because like, as you can see, in, as the difference is here, we've got a 70 CS difference there between the 80 carries and a 50 CS difference between the top laners. And that's exactly why uh, Jeremy Flip, even without the tower gold, would still be significantly far ahead of their, of their lane opponents. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I can't really offer a counterpoint except that... Uh... You know, for Julia Duck, if they can land a Paddle Star or a Sleepy Trouble Bubble, uh, Zoe seems to be the great initiator for the side of Julia Duck. We're going to have to play around the Zoe. So, a, a bit of a difficult ask, unfortunately, because the vision just isn't there even in their own jungle, with the top side of the map completely open for... Yeah, and it's not like Tenzin really has any options as to who that they're going to ult on to. For some reason, starting off a fight with Jeremy Flip, I don't think that's going to work out too well for him. Well, Jeremy Flip is just trying to play the role of decoy 
it looks like NG Blossom trying to position for that 20 minute Baron, but it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. XDME is standing there in that one brush, to see, in the fixer brush to see if they can spot him out. Mantra is available, might try to, uh, might opt for a Mantra Q here. Another pink placed in for the for the vision control there, because that they close, they will uh, put a lot of uh, emphasis on that. But XDME is taken hit by the sleepy trouble bubble and taken below half even without the uh, the paddle star hitting. Yeah, this power is. Apparent. You know, it's definitely something NG Blossom has to look out for. Uh, if they're not careful, Zoe's damage can be absolutely oppressive. Yes, we have the Karma Shield, we have the Morgana Black Shield, but still, you lose uh, three quarters of a life bar. A shield isn't going to help for that. But, uh, looks like Joey Flip claiming a dragon all on his lonesome, so... Soul Point for NG Blossom, which may help negate some of this uh, Zoe burst coming in. If they can prolong the fights, these Ocean Soul, or excuse me, the Ocean Dragons, which may culminate in a soul, will help regenerate. That's going to be 7.5% if they're allowed to claim the third Ocean Dragon. And which is huge for them because a lot, a lot of what NG Blossom is doing so far is just really abusing the power of split push. Because even though you see they have to, they have to answer Jeremy Flip repeatedly over and over. They have to answer him. Well, that's the whole thing. They're trying to answer with Astral Dawes, and just look at the numbers. We've got 201 CS on a Gangplank. And a Zaya that's just being starved under a turret. <laughs> and, a, and a good fight that comes out. Jeremy Flip taking off a little bit too much. A little bit too much that he can chew. But, uh. Well, he did get out of there, so. At least for now, not giving over a kill as Catnator and XD Me starting the Baron. That looks like they're gonna abandon ship on the Baron. Looks like, uh. Deciding that they were not able to take it. Preemptively throwing out the mantra Q XDME. But um with the pink cord that's in the brush, they really can't like do anything about it. Catnator getting caught out in the middle of the jungle there and taken down by random mid. Uh Sand United is used, but not before landing a barrel on him. Oh, this could be an interesting team fight here. Ashful getting rooted, so let's see if uh, the chase is on. Queue up the Yakety Sacks. And that tower might save, end up saving him, and now a Chain CC coming out from Black Oreo Cookies underneath the tower. They actually might be able to turn that fight around after losing two members. Oh, beautiful stun by Truly Tenzin. So that's going to turn this back around, that turret out of there which accounted for a lot of the damage for NG Blossom in that fight. They had no way to clear the tower and get the kills. A but little all... unclean, but uh, Jeremy Flit on the other side of the map just doing some work. It's like I said, as long as, long as Jeremy Flip is on the other side of the map, they cannot commit to these kind of things unless they have five people. And if they, ha and if they do, they have to make these fights quick, and they're not, which is giving Jeremy Flip plenty of time and even still assisting with his team with the cannon barrage and now astral staying staying a little too long is going to go down and now and now ng blossom is looking at the baron well as they rightfully should uh teleport well, is available every, every flip in case he wants to uh join for this uh he shouldn't have to uh this baron's probably more of a bait out than anything because look at where Black Oreo Cookies is positioned. Oh, well, looks like here we go. Tenzin coming in, teleport taunt. And it's like I said, it's like without the positioning, they're really struggling in this fight, but it seems as though Julia Duck really wants to come back, but I 
think, yep, t uh, Tenzin and Random Mid are gonna go down and they're gonna turn their eyes back to the Baron yet again. With the Baron dropping down just below 2k, and nobody stepping up to contest it, that Baron is very cleanly gonna head over to the side of NG Blossom. And with Dra with Dragon Soul coming up in the next 50 seconds, that's what they're gonna look towards next. Jeremy Flip does not have the teleport available, but it looks like he does want to push top lane first before meeting up with his team down there. If even opting to meet his team down there. And well, not just this, is the, this is the problem NG Blossom is proposing to Julia Duck. We have a Gangplank on the top side of the map who is going to take an inhibitor, so you have to answer that. But at the same time, the whole rest of NG Blossom is going to set up for what's going to be an Ocean Soul. And it looks like the choice is made. Jeremy Flip using the Baron Recall to get out of there before Tenzin and Pepsi can rotate over. But that top lane's now pushed in against an exposed inhibitor. We know where the next flashpoint's going to be. Truly, Tenzin does have Stand United up, but completely uncontested Dragon. So, Ocean Soul for the side of NG Blossom. And just getting rooted by the Karma there, staying way too close and being and not really having, not really respecting the fact that NG Blossom just took the Dragon, just uh, calmly farming farming the jungle. And before uh, NG Blossom just walks in with the extra speed boost coming from Karma, that they couldn't they, he couldn't deal with so now random mid once again going down there and now that ng blossom is looking towards the mid lane might be looking to <coughs> knock the doors of these uh two inhibitors three oh, inhibitors bitch. with uh jeremy flip pushing bot i was gonna say this is gonna be at least two if not three uh astral dose just getting dumpstered again by jeremy flip got hit by a barrel then got hit by a Q and it took like 90% of his health and then the finisher was the barrel the cannon barrage since it didn't kill but it seems like to not matter because it's just like NG Blossom completely taking over the second half here able to knock down two inhibitors with super minions and four, on four cannon minions right now really really putting down pressure on on the base and now oh, there's a fifth cannon minion yeah, this is this got ugly fast for and the, the towers that they pulled. Oh, the the I I can't even want. This is a horror show. Please change the channel. Oh <laughs> my God, this this is just <laughs> and one and NG Blossom remaining undefeated for the season to continue on their dominating performances to end off today. Wow, no. Dominating would be uh, a word I completely agree with. Uh, a little ugly at the start. Uh, I think they uh, overestimated themselves in the top lane, giving over a, the first blood kill. But after that, it seemed to be all NG Blossom all the time. Uh, Jeremy Flip, 279 CS in a game that was 28 and a half minutes. So that's nine plus CS a minute. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, almost, it's almost 10 CS per minute. And that is, and that the 10 CS per minute is the goal in any, in any game. If you're at that or above that, you are farming very, very well for yourself. Yeah, sign that man up for the LCS. I say on, as far as his gangplank goes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> You know, you gotta be able to do that on all of the all of your champions. You know, but, but if you can pull something like that off, uh, that's gonna potentially change teams' evaluation and go. Uh, maybe we won't give him gangplank going forward. You know, I've not seen this team before in the limited amount of casting that I've done here, but. Uh, I would want to take Jeremy Flip off of that Gangplank and potentially get Catenator off of that Caitlyn, as I've seen Catenator dominating on Caitlyn a couple times. So, because you know, it was, it, when it comes to Catenator, we've seen Catenator perform on multiple champions. 
That is true. And uh, but it sounds we, like uh, an intruder try. alarm. Somebody might be joining us here. The very person themselves, Cadenator. I was talking about you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> How are you feeling after that one? Pretty good. We were a little, not going to lie, we were a little nervous going in, but we came through. What's to be nervous about? I thought you guys were uh, the the big the big confidence boys. Like, nah, yeah, we're not we're not losing anybody. We're going undefeated this split team. I thought what happened what happened to that figure that you guys had like two weeks ago? People put in random players, and then there's like D ones, and we're like, ooh, are, they, are these Smurfs or are these just regular players? Uh, that sounds, sounds, sounds a little scared from my perspective. I don't know. Not 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 boasting the same confidence I'm used to seeing from you guys, but uh, and you guys played like it too, in my opinion. Okay. What what do you guys what do you what do you have to say about that? Like, how do you guys think you guys played that early game? That, that, that making some. I don't know what happened top of the map, but bot side crushed. Bot side definitely did crush, but top side it was a. Uh, it, it like from from my perspective, it seemed like something was was going on there. Like, you have have any insight on what happened there? No, I just Although focused you on my game. lane. I focused on my lane early game. I I don't know what they were doing. Okay. <laughs> But then coming into the to the mid to late game, how many uh, like how confident were you that you were going to be able to continue to position the way that you were positioning, as well as like just perform on the Caitlyn? I felt pretty good. We our comp had a lot of front line and safety for me, which is what Caitlyn wants, and so we had a lot of dra- Briar and Dragon control. So mid game it was just taking con- we took control of the map, and we were confident we could secure the objectives and keep our control of river mm-hmm. good 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 you got any questions for him Frico? when are you uh gonna send be sent a repair bill for all that turret damage you did early on uh did you actually take all three outer turrets uh i think we did no you specifically me uh i, I got know bot, i got bot. mid and i got i think i got top yeah, I knew you got bot and top, so once you confirmed mid, so yeah. Uh, were you worried that uh, if you got CC'd out of a fight that your team was still going to win the f- the fights if they were to break out? Yeah, we got Jeremy Flip on our team. He's just kind of <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So now I guess, I, I guess the uh, final question to really give to the audience here is... Uh, now that you guys are 11 and 0 with uh, only five games to play and one, and one of them is still against Iron Dragons, do you still feel the same level of confidence that you guys are going to have a perfect season? Yeah, easy. Better than Cloud9. <laughs> Wait, what was that last line? Better than Cloud9. They lost Better than people. Cloud9. Well, you heard it here, everybody. They're, they're, they're still looking to, to keep the, the perfect record for the season. It sounds like Brown might need to step in. But uh, anyway, that'll that's gonna do it for the end of the end of today. Thank you so much, Catinator, for allowing us to interview you. Thanks for having me. And good luck going forward. Good, definitely good luck going forward. But that's gonna wrap up things here for the Ascendant League series for day one. We will see you all tomorrow. Do not forget. Um, do not forget the all the All Star tournament and the and the one and the one for all. One one versus one tournament. Sorry, the all. I'm I'm just messing up. All now, I believe that all star event, all star voting, and the one v one tournament, all star <laughs> voting and registration, and the one v one, uh, and the one v one tournament that's next Friday. So remember, if you did not, uh, if you did vote already, to go in and edit your votes to make sure that they have your name on it, because if it does not have a name on it, we are not going to count it. It is very important. We did have some technical difficulties, and that is very important. But tomorrow, tomorrow, um, well, before we even get to that, I will be participating in the 1v1 tournament. So if that's a little bit more incentive for you all, then uh, <laughs> feel free to come try to take me down. Um, other than that, uh, tomorrow, we do have Ape Together Strong starting off the day against Iron Dragon. First game, 1 o'clock tomorrow Eastern, right here at the Ascendant League Series. I'm signing off. I'm your host, Brian Anonym. And I am Frico. I and we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, everybody.